why don't you take a look at it, whether or not we had um, uh, thought of that within the metric category? So, so kind of where are we with working on those uh, categories? Um, and then we also talked about finding a meeting. To, we were talking about meeting times. We wanted to follow up on that. Um, and I had another one, but I can't remember. Um, at this point, it'll come to me. Okay, so I have two items for, that you mentioned. One is uh, dive into the work and figure out where we are and what we are doing next. So the status on our repository or the metrics work. And the second one was meeting times. And that was with regards to um, switching to a weekly schedule so that we can uh, work on these metrics faster, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. OK. Um, I'm still collecting agenda items before we jump into anything. I have no uh, suggestion. So as uh, well, some of us are uh, having a talk at the Open Source Summit in Europe. I don't know, Jace, if you are going there. But it would be great to know you to, to meet you there. But uh, the point is that we have a couple of talks. One of them is a tutorial about how to drive uh, your own report about diversity and inclusion for your community. Um, one of the things I would like to have here is to have feedback from you, in this case, Nicole and Jace, about uh, some questions that Georg and me that we have about this. So uh, basically, a strategy or ideas about how to retrieve some feedback from the attendees. So this might be part from the for the agenda. Yep, that is also an item that I'm interested in. Then I have one item. Uh, I'm part of the Open Leaders Cohort 6. Um, this mm -hmm. is a lot of program around MOSFEST for uh, training leaders in open communities, not just open source. But um, what I want to do is apply what I learned there here to the DNI work group. And so I just wanted to report on that what's happening um let's see so we have another comment yes mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, we can drive uh, this about the around the repository and what the information is i don't know if you have already had the chance to have a look at it i haven't looked at the repository specifically but i have an idea about what it's trying to accomplish in house so I would say don't go into too much remedial stuff for me right now. I'd rather just listen and, and see where things are at for everybody else. Okay. Okay. That, that uh, is my last question. Do you have something that you would like to ask us today or comment, Jason? Um, not really. I, I really just want to lead with listening and see where, okay. where I can help. Um, it's good to know that this stuff is happening and that uh, this is being taken seriously as a as a core part of metrics for communities. So that is super exciting. Um, obviously, at some point, I'm going to want to know how we can integrate this with the Kubernetes community and probably the other communities that I work with inside Google, uh, because I'm starting to do more outreach within Google's uh, open source projects. So it might be a really good opportunity to expand the usage of this even uh, much wider than than it currently is. So. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I just want to listen and, and make sure that I'm I'm helping where I can and doing what I need to do. So. All right, we can do that. Thank you. Um, so okay. let's see. We have four items: status of metrics, meeting times, the open source summit, Europe tutorial, and then the open leaders update. I'm fine with going last. I think meeting times is an easy one that we can knock out first, and then the tutorial and status on metrics, I think they go together. So. Yeah. We, yeah, we wanted to find a, um, a, a weekly time um, that worked. And I know. Um, uh, yeah, 
I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what works for all of you. Um, I know as I'm starting to uh, to dive into the Kubernetes community, I'm working on things like the contributor um, SIG and uh, non-code contributor guide and things like that. And and it, it so happens that their meetings are Wednesdays as well. Um, but uh, yeah, everybody seems to love Wednesdays. Um, but, uh, and I and I wondered if uh, I know that the chaos meetings, um, uh, the the uh, larger chaos project meetings are on Tuesdays. Gary, what um, what meeting time did we throw at the last time around? Was it Mondays uh, I'm sure or Thursdays? About Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays and Thursdays, okay. But so, one of the things we could do is send out the when is good and ask everyone. I know we had established this time before summer break, and so schedules have shifted for people as the new, um, new academic year, school starts again, and so on. So maybe it's time to reevaluate what our meeting time is. Okay. Do you want me to put out in the um, in the mailing list um, Mondays, kind of proposed Mondays or or Thursdays, say nine to ten, the same time? Um, yeah, we can we can do that. Or do you know this tool when is good? Or uh, Doodle or any other tool? I, I shared one in the chat. Did you see that, Nicole? Oh, cool. Okay. Maybe we can use something like that because it reduces oh, cool. the back and forth. Yeah, I'm happy to. Yep, I, I will do that. Okay. And I think it, it's uh, it makes sense to reevaluate what day we meet. Um, so, and going weekly and working on our, I think we'll have a faster pace on developing the resources, especially now that we have the framework in place, it would be good to start yeah. knocking out some of the detailed pages. Yeah, I like that. That sounds good. Okay, I got you down for sending out that email and asking for when to do it. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you, Nicole. Daniel, did you have any comments on this? Okay, so you're okay with going to weekly and finding yep. a yeah, the only point is perhaps the growth maturity and decline working group is uh, taking place the Wednesdays. We are not having the meeting. Um, that's all. Yeah, I know. I know that we had so when we switched to a biweekly schedule on Wednesdays, the diversity inclusion group was like, "We'll just take the opposite week during the same time." <laughs> because then we have the same time every week to join and I don't have to remember all the different times and dates and uh, simplify it. But if you want to switch to a weekly meeting, then we cannot overlap with the uh, growth mentor and decline work group unless we use a different Zoom channel. So that's also possible. If you want to stay on the time we are right now, then we would just have to find a different uh, way to connect. And that would be would be possible too. I can create another Zoom channel. It's not a or Zoom room. I think it's not a problem. So anyway, yeah, let's send out that uh, inquiry and figure out what works for everyone. Okay, sounds good. So stats on metrics. Um, I think we can. Do that before we talk about the tutorial, or do you see a reason for doing the tutorial first, Daniel? No, no, no. Let's go with the metrics. Okay. So I saw that Emma had put in a pull request last night, and uh, 
I have to follow up or you have to She was reord reordering things. Sorry, what? Oh, she was reordering things and creating a couple of folders. That was all. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the files changed in the pull request. So I'm going to put mm -hmm. this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jace, what, what, sorry to ask, what do you mean by also to agenda notes if they are shareable? <clears throat> so in Kubernetes community, we have Google Docs where we keep notes of all the meetings. And so that basically, as we're talking, we could take notes and action items and all that stuff. I didn't know if you had um, something like that here for these meetings. Uh, that's a good point. We do, and I didn't use it. <laughs> so on the repository, there's a link to a Google Doc that we've been using. OK. Um, I'll share that link here real quick. I'll uh, share it once my browser decides to load and make sure it's the right document. Great, thank you. Yeah, no, that, no, that's a good, good point. Time, uh, Nicole. What, what would you like to discuss about the specific metrics or, or categories that we were discussing? I, I have missed some of the previous meetings, so I don't know if you were specifically working on some of them or you were working on, on really focused on a metric. Yeah, one of the one of the questions that came up for me um, as I was working mm -hmm. on something else last night was. Um, have we captured the importance of mentors and, and mentorship programs and how we're welcoming newcomers into the community or into a community? Um, if, that's, um, if that's reflected in our metric categories, I was going to go back and take a look to, to make sure that it was or suggest that it is if it isn't. Um, That's a good, good point. I feel like we have something like this, but I would have to hunt that down as well. You know exactly, Georg. What it, what it um, what, <laughs> the thought that hit me hit me was, wow, that would be really strange if we didn't incorporate that because it seems like something that would have been incorporated, right? Like. Yep. Um, so but, mentorship is under leadership. Oh, great. Okay. Perfect. And I wish I had faster internet here. I'm on Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi here in, at the university is from before everyone brought their own phones. So we have mentorship, but we don't have welcome new contributors. What is, what is mentorship and leadership, you said? Yes, in leadership. Okay. So then perhaps, uh, yeah, do we have active mentorship and related activities? So perhaps we can, one of the things we can have is if uh, if there is, uh, if there are mentorship programs in first place, and in second place, if there are mentorship programs for underrepresented uh, uh, groups of people, so perhaps that's not, that's another question. 
And then we can go for the specific of some of the metrics that we were having for the Benestack gender report, as you said, Nicole, in the sense that we can have uh, newcomers and how is the ratio of newcomers compared to the usual ratio in, in, in the community and so on. So uh, some, some more context here is that in the Benestack case, so of course, populations are not comparable, but one of the results we had was that people that were mentored that came from Audrey or, or Google Summer of Code, where we have code, they only had a year, uh, but uh, mainly focusing on Audrey, they tend to be longer or contribute longer than the usual rate in the community. Of course, there are, there are a lot of limitations to the study, uh, but that's kind of an interesting first step. Um, <laughs> or threat to validity and so on, but that was really interesting and it's something we should definitely include here. Well, it, yeah, yeah, so, but yes, exactly, Danielle. Danielle. So, so two things came to mind for me. One, the research that we've been doing in the OpenStack community around um, some of the mentorship programs available there. And what we've been seeing, um, we did, let's see, we, we had um, data from Outreachy. We also had data from um, Google Summer of Code, mm -hmm. right? And we included those data points in the, in the research reports. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, it was fantastic what we were seeing in terms of uh, how long they, they um, their longevity in the community, right? Their, their uh, level of contributions and their longevity in the community. So, so that data um, came to mind for me. And then the, the other thing that came to mind for me, and most likely because I'm just starting to dive into the Kubernetes community, was that it occurred to me, having been new to the OpenStack community a couple of years ago, and now being new to the Kubernetes community, um, that both of those communities seem to have very solid, um, very, very solid ways that they welcome newcomers to the community. Well, where you feel because they, they have such ways that they welcome you, you, you feel welcomed to contribute, right? Um, and so I, I wanted to make sure that that was reflected in some way uh, in the metric categories that we're developing, right? That this existence of these kinds of programs. Um, the, the other thing, the other data point, the third data point that came to mind for me was, as I've been involved in uh, the speed mentoring programs, first in the OpenStack community and then bringing them into the, into the Linux community um, and and talking to folks, you know, the, the, I believe it's the Kubernetes community and, and I'm just starting to dive into the um, mentoring uh, programs there now. So, Jace, keep me honest here, but I believe Kubernetes has a cohort mentorship model that the OpenStack community is now starting to um, model a program after, right? So Kindle, um, Kindle Nelson, folks like Kindle Nelson and Amy Marich um, have taken a look at um, uh, uh, cohort programs like that um, as, as ways to, uh, to shape uh, effective or successful mentorship programs. Um, so anyways, as I was taking a look at this, you know, those are just some of the data points that were, that, that were coming to mind for me is how do we, how do we reflect, uh, the, the importance of mentoring and mentorship programs within the metric categories that we're developing. So can I add a couple things, um, just for clarification? Um, so my colleague Paris Pittman here at Google is responsible for all of the mentoring things that are happening in Kubernetes, and she 
basically did a deep study for several months on all of the patterns and anti-patterns of mentorship in communities. And what she found was there's, there's a very strong ne negative correlation between uh, the people doing the mentoring and the people receiving the mentorship. Um, and it manifests in a lot of different ways. Um, burnout and uh, incompatibility with matches between people and a lot of other things. So there's all these mitigating factors uh, with mentorship that she has tried to address in the Kubernetes model, which is really a more of an uh, more of an automation type system and a one to many uh, type of mentoring. So basically doing meet contributor sessions where multiple people can attend and get sort of group mentorship, but there's not necessarily cohorts. It's really just show up and attend and, and absorb as a contributor. So uh, what I would say is that uh, a metric that might be more important to track is not really mentorship per se as a specific thing, but what does the onboarding process look like? For example, you know, in Ubuntu, you have people that uh, will pair up with you and actually be your personal guide into the project and help you understand what you need to do. So there's the sort of Sherpas that, that function in the community to do that work. So I think onboarding is sort of the meta category. And then under that, you have all these different ways that that takes place. Um, so it's not only, uh, you know, yes, no, is there an onboarding program? Uh, is it individual? Is it group? Is it, um, is it lead to stronger retention rates or, or more significant contributions? Uh, what's the rate of people ascending any particular membership hierarchies, you know, from contributor to maintainer? So basically all these, these metrics that fall out of what does the onboarding process look like? Oh, that's great. Thanks, Jace. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if, um, if we can bring some of that, um, if parents would, <clears throat> would be willing to, if, if the team would be willing to share um, those data points for for uh, for broader uh, benefit, I guess, or for broader um, dissemination, I guess. Yeah. So let me. Um, I know that she has uh, something uh, recorded. She did a thing for the Women in Tech show. I'm going to paste that in chat. Um, that it talks about her approach to this. Um, and I'm, okay. I'm sure that she'd be more than happy to join us on this call as well. She's just out of the country. Out of the country. Oh, excellent. Okay. Okay, great. It, it would it would be nice to include that in, yeah, in, in these um, development of this. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Um, yeah, those are those are really good points um, for how to, how to measure that is of course the next question. But if we could talk with Paris, maybe um, we can figure that out. Yeah, I think she'll have some really good ideas. She's super brilliant and uh just this this is so right in her wheelhouse so i'm sure she'll be happy to contribute yeah yeah, and then yeah. very cool from a structure perspective we'll have to then see whether we make the mentorship um, goal that we have or the, the question just expand all this information into one resource page or whether we have to split that up. So the, those are questions we'll have to address when we get the details. Yeah, this is really great stuff. But I agree we should have onboarding somewhere. So we is leadership the right category or the right focus area to That's a good question. Maybe we need a, a new a new a new category for for onboarding. That may make sense. I'll just add it in leadership and then if it expands too much we can always break it out into a different focus mm -hmm. area. Hmm. 
Yeah, I I feel like it's, it's different than than how I think about um, the leadership and governance part of a community. But yeah, yeah, it, certainly for consideration. So you think governance would be better? I actually think it's a separate. I think, well, I don't want to. I don't want to misstate or misrepresent. But I actually think that what we will see is that it is actually a metric category unto itself, much like event representation is. Okay, I, I'm creating a pull request um, right now just as a line item in leadership, but I um, have a comment in there that we might break it out. Um, yeah. I do want to track, Georg, um, where are we in terms of uh, so we have the framework of the metric category. Um, this is this is good. This is why we we're putting in weekly meetings. Um, I, do we have a path for where we're headed in terms of how we're working through each of those metric categories and putting detail underneath them? I need to listen to the last, to the recording of our last meeting. Did you say, do we have a cap? Do we have a path? Do we have, um, what are our next steps? What are our next steps for um, working through the detail under each of those metric categories? No, no, we have not defined this path yet. Um, I think it's a great idea. So, if we can spend some time doing that right now. So one of the thoughts that I had was to um, pick one focus area after another and focus on one focus area per week. And that way within seven weeks we would get through the focus areas, maybe that's too ambitious, maybe we need more time. And within each of those focus areas, we would, of course, have to um, clean up the questions that we have right now and then start prototyping the resource pages with detailed instructions for how to actually go about measuring and uh, adding research that supports the approaches that we have and so on. Got it. Okay. Do we have, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at, because you may have worked through this in Vancouver um, with the project places metric category. Um, but have do we not. have. We have not. What we did in Vancouver was define the structure of what the different levels of information are and the different um, markdown files that we will create. Uh, okay. So it's the, okay. At the so you, level. Gotcha. Okay. So you basically have, um, as we work through each one, what information we need to come up with for each of, each of the different ones. Yes, that's exactly it. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. So, focus on one focus area per week, or maybe we don't even have a time to just try to do it within one week and then switch. Or I, I don't know what we want to do. So if we if we have a really well-defined plan to work during the hour, and we can collaborate all together at the same time. 
uh, I think it's feasible. The point is that we need to really uh, work prepared uh, the session so everyone can help in somehow. So if we have four or five metrics, uh, probably people can uh, work together in some of those metrics. We can create some Google Docs and so on, so people can join each of those. But the point would be how to prepare this in the right way. So uh, that, that needs some time from probably some of us. So what would that look like? Um, so, uh, for, yeah, for, for instance, if, if you go to uh, to the very first, uh, I think this is doing something, yeah, and it could be here in the chat. So if you go, for instance, for the event representation, uh, so we have speaker demographic, neighbors, the access tickets, blah, blah, blah. So we have the questions, but for each of the uh, questions or, or, or names that we have there, we, we still have to define and declare some metrics and, and so on. Um, so for instance, we have one, two, three, four, five slots there. So if we are some people, let's say we are five or six or 10 people, then we can we can work each of us in each of those. And then we can put all together and basically send all of the pull requests. But for this, I would say we need to prefer this, we have the links to the docs, um, and then someone should perhaps be in charge of doing this and pull requesting everything after this, or people can pull request everything. I don't know. What do you think? So, uh, my main internet connection is not very good, so if I misunderstood something, please do correct hmm. me. What I understood you saying is that we can take the focus area event diversity, create a Google Doc for each of these questions that we have so we have five google docs and then we split them up each of us takes one um starts dumping in ideas and then we review across each other's google docs and edit until we are somewhat happy and then we move it into the repository yeah that's that's at least the idea i have for having this done in nowhere okay you want to have this we could even add just to keep track of what's happening we can have one issue for each google doc so we have one place where we have a the discussion on github yeah we work mm -hmm. and of course anyone is, is, is welcome to join mm -hmm. yeah i i think that works i mean with the abstracts that we Submitted for the different events, we used a shared Google Doc, and that um, seemed to work really well. Okay, so will the next step be to create those Google Docs and those issues, and then just start working on them and self-assign yourself to a question that you're interested in or yeah. so uh, my suggestion would be so let's say that we decide to go for event diversity and this is what we are working on um, on a week uh, then let's imagine that it's the four of us so the idea would be well we send some uh, some let's say some schedule or agenda to work with in, in our working meeting in a week and then we will say this is the way we are going to proceed so we have these five issues with these five google docs or just one google doc with everything um this is how we would like to proceed so let's imagine that we it's the four of us so basically we would go either in in couples saying okay so perhaps chase and me will work in speaker demographics and then georg and nico will work on attendees demographics then we keep uh, filling the documents with ideas and brainstorming. Maybe it's a matter of uh, five minutes for each question, and then we just need to create a markdown and so on. Or maybe we start discussing about a lot of things, and then it takes more time. So it depends on the question and the metric. Yep, of course. Okay. 
So I, I can certainly volunteer to create the Google Docs and the issues and send out an email to the mailing list about this. I still need a link to the mailing list. Um, okay. Georg is your... Yep. It's <laughs> chaos.community slash participate. And we have one mailing list that we share with the entire chaos community. So there's no dedicated list for the work group. We just append the the um, subject, or we. It's obvious from the context that it's for the diversity inclusion work group. Did you write them down? Oh, maybe we can write down the mailing list here in the chat. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you were okay. Sorry. I just know that we have this participate page that has all of the links. Okay, um, Nicole, was there anything else or can we move on to the next subject? Um, no, no, we can move on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's always good to uh, get everyone caught up and moving this forward. So I'm excited for developing the mentorship part. Onboarding. Yeah, me too. That's something that you're super into right now, and you have done a lot of research, and you just want to start working on it. Then, by, by all means, uh, go ahead and do that. There's no reason why you shouldn't, just because we are focusing on a different focus area right now. Um. Daniel, do you want to share, or I can share the link to... Oh, to the card templates? I have it. Uh, um, I was thinking yeah. to uh. the coordinating document that we have. Hmm. The, to provide an outline of what we are doing and provide some context first. Yeah. Mm. Here, I have it. Please write it down in doc. Yep. So. so basically we have we have three documents here. Uh, no, so we have moved uh, in the in the agenda item. So we are now talking about the Open Source Summit uh, Europe tutorial. Um, so we have three documents. The first document is a general overview of what we would like to do. So we have an agenda of the things we would like to have there in the tutorial. Uh, another document is basically we are uh, 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 migrating all of the categories and questions and metrics we have into cards because we want to print all of those cards to be shared with attendees so people can have a look at all of the areas we, we are having a look at. So people can take notes and the idea of those cards, basically the main goal is to to retrieve feedback from the people. So our idea initially is to focus on, on a couple of um, categories or main categories and then try to dig into, into those. Um, and the third document is basically the, the methodology or maybe uh, Georg would like to elaborate a bit more afterwards. The idea is to the method and the process that people should take into account at least when starting this, this measuring process. Um, but by the way, Nicole, uh, you should have received an email from Georg and me where you were invited to be part of the tutorial, if you are at the end in Europe. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think I, I'm going to be there, but I appreciate, I know, I know. <laughs> it made me think, wow, maybe I should try to get there. <laughs> you should yeah. go there. We would love to have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are there details for that somewhere? Um, can someone post a link to it? Oh, the, the Open Source Summit, the tutorial yeah. talk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me look for this. I, I am, it's just been so chaotic lately that I, <laughs> I have not had a good uh, event calendar in place. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull up the... <laughs> description. Daniel, do you want to walk 
through the documents and point out the areas we want feedback or do you want me to do that? It's only seven minutes left, so uh, basically my, my main concern so far is how to have a dynamic tutorial, because uh, I have some experience driving tutorials with, uh, with a technical, uh, from a technical point of view, so how to help people and so on. This is a bit different, because we are going to help people to, uh, to focus on some non-technical Thing. So I, I do not have that experience there, so I don't know if you have experience, Nicole or, or, or Jace. Um, I have some experience creating tutorials, but um, I'm probably a better reviewer at this point than I am a, an author. Hmm. Okay. So any piece of advice? Um, I think my the thing that I find is don't make assumptions about people's starting points. So just be really explicit about what you expect when you start, what you do to pro progress to the next level. So people know if they're missing concepts because as people go through tutorials and they they hear something that doesn't that they don't understand, they assume it's them and not the tutorial. So it can be very disheartening as a learner to think, boy, I should know this and I don't, I don't understand. So the, the, the good thing is to always do a level set. So. To move on to the next level of the tutorial, you're going to need to, to have a good understanding of X, Y, and Z. We'll cover those, and if we don't cover them here, we, they were covered in this prior module. So that's that's what I find is a good strategy to help people move along through tutorials that way. Thank you. Yeah. That's a really good piece of advice. So I just posted the, uh, posted the link in the chat. So this is the link to the... Um, well, the tutorial and the Pinsor Summit talk. Um, so, Jace, if you take a look at the document, um, the one that called <clears throat> OSS EU DNI tutorial, it's the first one in the Google Doc, the planning document. If you scroll down to page two, we have a structure. So we want to start with an introduction, what it's about, spend about 10 minutes asking participants what they want to get out of the tutorial. Um, because as you said- Can you link this in the, I'm sorry, can you link it to the document in the chat? Because for the reason I'm not finding it in my thing. It might have been, there was one I did not have access to, so I requested access, and that might be it. Oh, maybe. Let me, let me try and pull this up. Yeah, I, it doesn't let me in. Daniel, did you yeah. this? Can you share? Uh, which one are we talking about? The planning document, where we... Okay, the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the, the, yeah, those are not um, um, uh, those are not going to be private because these are agendas and so on. So we can basically start the link. Yeah. So on the second page, there's a section called structure. So the outline we want to start with an introduction, then ask participants for what they want to get out of the tutorial, so that as we walk through, we can um, tailor it to what they what participants are interested in. We want to introduce the OpenStack Gen report as an example for our DNI report and everyone has a better understanding of what it is that we are talking about. Of course, always pointing at this as being just a starting point and that there are many other forms of metrics to include. Then we want to talk about the process and what to consider for creating a DNI report. So what are the steps involved in doing this? One of the things we want to do is have a worksheet for participants to start taking notes down with 
who are the stakeholders, uh, who should I involve, what kinds of metrics can we even get to as we walk through that they can jot that down. Then we want to introduce the goal question metric approach because that is essential to how we structure the material within the chaos group. Then we focus on three out of eight focus areas like events is one of them or onboarding could be a future new focus area just because we cannot cover all of it and then go into a little bit more detail on uh, what it takes to um, collect data in each of these focus areas and then the rest is q a and brainstorming and working through issues or questions that people have together and nicole you're also welcome to provide feedback i think one thing I am, yeah, go ahead nicole to, sorry oh no i just was gonna say i'm 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 happy to to look through this and provide feedback but james go ahead i was gonna say um so i think people sometimes get the difference between diversity and inclusion confused mm -hmm. um i think it would be good to unpack that or give a simple example you know i, I like to use that diversity is when you or inclusion is when you make room at a table for somebody and and, and diversity is when you sit down and look around at the table and not everybody looks like you so i think that we maybe some way of framing what those are and the differences and why they actually have different purposes is important yep. and it might be good even to to frame that in terms of the data that proves that products produced by diverse teams uh, are better products um, and that sort of thing i i know there's probably some studies out there on that so hmm. Yep, I think that's a great point. This. Oh, by the way, we are running out of time. It's uh, 7 p.m. in Europe, uh, 10 a.m. in uh, Pacific time. So I guess that we should close. Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm happy to receive more feedback if you want to uh, just comment on the Google Doc. I'm happy <laughs> to work with that. Um, I'll send out an email to the mailing list. Jace, if you want to sign up so that you get our communication, that would be great. Yep. I'm signed up now. Perfect. Um, any last comments before we close? Thank you for your time. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Bye.